briefing on the 17th meeting of the Chemical Review Committee. Um, my name is Andrea Lechner. I'm a program officer in the Secretariat of the Rotterdam Convention, and I have the pleasure to present to you today the arrangements made for the upcoming Chemical Review Committee meeting. Um, you're going to hear a little presentation about this upcoming committee meeting, and then also my colleague Anna Wittig will just briefly tell you the current status of arrangement for the POPs review committee meeting. And then we have time at the end for questions and answers. You will also receive the PowerPoint presentation after the meeting. So let us um, start with some familiar information. Um, the Chemical Review Committee is the subsidiary body under the Rotterdam Convention, and it is the body that is taking care of the inclusion of additional chemicals in the Rotterdam Convention. There are two possible tracks how new chemicals are included under the Convention. The first track is when parties take a final regulatory action to prohibit or severely restrict the chemical in their territory, then they should um, notify the Secretariat of this action. And once we have two notifications from two different regions, those are called the prior informed consent regions, then these um, notifications are forwarded for review by the Chemical Review Committee, and they review it against Annex 2 criteria of the Convention. The second track for including new chemicals under the Rotterdam Convention are the severely hazardous pesticide formulations. So those um, are proposals that can be made by developing countries and countries with economies in transition. If they experience problems caused by these formulations under the local conditions in their country, they can propose such a formulation to be included under the Rotterdam Convention. So here we only need one proposal and the CRC then reviews them against the criteria set out in Annex 4 of the Convention. The CRC undertakes two steps when it reviews chemicals. The first step is always to review either the notifications against Annex 2 or the severely hazardous pesticide formulations against Annex 4. And then they make a recommendation if the criteria are fulfilled for this chemical to be included in Annex 3. The second step in the subsequent year then is to develop a draft decision guidance document for this chemical that is recommended for listing. So this is uh, maybe a bit the other way around for those of you following the, the POPs review committee work. So first the recommendation for listing is done, then the draft decision guidance document is developed, and then the entire package is sent to the COP for consideration. The intention of the draft decision guidance document is to help parties take an informed decision, because once a chemical is listed in Annex 3 to the Convention, each party needs to provide a response on whether they wish to continue importing that chemical. And in order to take an informed decision, they have information available to them in the draft in the decision guidance document. The CRC is composed of 31 government designated experts from the five UN regions. And in the CRC meetings, there are these experts, but then there are also observers. And because only the individuals that are actually members of the committee are the members, anybody else is an observer. So, for example, a representative of a party to the convention is an observer in the framework of the CRC. Here we now come to the specific arrangements for the next meeting, CRC 17. Um, we'll meet from 20 to 24th of September this year. And uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is once again entirely taking place online. Pre-meetings, plenary, contact group, everything will take place online. Um, the schedule is daily from 1 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Hopefully that also includes all the contact group sessions. Um, this is a Geneva and Rome time, UTC plus two. And there are pre-meetings of intersessional task groups. They are taking place on the 14th and the 15th of September. 
and I'll talk a little bit about their importance later on. Because it is an online meeting with all these challenges and uh, limitations, there will also be an opportunity. Firstly, comments can also be sent through a chat and then they would be read out on behalf of a delegate, but also there's a possibility to use email inputs if it is seen that the delegation is really not able to make their um, contributions at the meeting. The CRC traditionally operates in English only, so the entire meeting is in English without simultaneous interpretation. And at the end of the slide, you can find the website with all the relevant information for the upcoming CRC meeting. If you would like to get an idea of how the meeting is working, here are the most relevant documents, the provisional agenda, document one, and the annotations to the agenda, that is one at one. The scenario note contains an explanation of the chair and how she intends on running the meeting. And the tentative schedule, information document number two, shows on a daily basis which items are expected to be taken up when. Here you can see the provisional agenda of CRC 17. The most important part in the technical work, you can see that at the CRC there are only notifications of final regulatory action to, to be considered. There is no draft DGD on the agenda this year. And you can see that there are seven pesticides on the agenda. And this is because of the fact that CRC had once again has to meet online the Bureau, in consultation with the members, has decided to um, prioritize the agenda of this meeting. So that means these are not all the chemicals that could have possibly been considered at this meeting. There are also additional notifications of final regulatory action that are awaiting consideration. Those are on amitrol, carbon tetrachloride, methyl bromide, Myrex and Paraquat. But these will not be taken up by CRC 17. They will be taken up by a later meeting, hopefully CRC 18, when we can once again meet in a face-to-face -face setting and uh, cover additional work. Looking now at these seven pesticides that are on the agenda of CRC 17. Um, so here's the first one, Iprodion. It is a fungicide used, for example, on wines, fruit trees, and vegetables, according to the notifications that we have received. And the notifications that will be considered at the meeting, they come from Mozambique and the European Union. On Mesidacion, it is an insecticide used, for example, on fruit trees, cotton, tobacco, sugarcane, and vegetables. And the notifications that are to be reviewed are from Mozambique and Uruguay. Theodicarb is also an insecticide used, for example, on cotton, grapes, wheat, rye, and oats. And the notifications are once again coming from Mozambique and the European Union. Turbofos, also an insecticide with notifications from Mozambique and Canada. It is, for example, used on mice, sorghum, potato, beans, and sugar beets. Continuing with the seven pesticides that will be continued, there's also Cavarul. It's an insecticide and a caricide used, for example, on cotton, potato, mice, tobacco, and vegetables. Here, there's only one notification to be reviewed from Mozambique because the CRC at its fourth meeting already reviewed the notification from the EU and found to meet the criteria. So the second notification that's required is already there. Chlorophen vinfos, also an insecticide used for example on vegetables, but also it was notified to be used on animals. And here we have notifications from Mozambique and Norway. And finally, methylparathion, an insecticide and a caricide used, for example, on cereals, fruits, vines, vegetables, cotton, and rice. Here there are two notifications for review, one from China and one from Uruguay. But in addition, there is already a notification that was reviewed by the first meeting of the committee from the EU that was found to meet the criteria. 
So this chemical could proceed to recommendation for listing if only one of the two notifications from either China or Uruguay meet the criteria. Looking now at the work of the intersessional task groups, um, traditionally in the context of the CRC, the review of notifications of final regulatory action does not start at the meeting, but it usually starts a couple of months ahead of the meeting, where the committee already does a preliminary review of the notifications. And the intention of this review is to identify whether there's additional information is needed, whether the notifying party needs to be contacted for any follow-up questions. So it is purely meant to enhance the efficiency of the work of the committee and the participation of members and observers, but each chemical will in addition be fully discussed during the CRC 17 meeting. You can see here the steps that are followed by these intersessional task groups. These task groups are composed of CRC members, so there's a draft and a chair that prepare an initial draft report. Then the task group members can provide comments. The report is revised and then it is posted on the website for comments by all members and by all observers to the committee. So those are all parties and observers to the convention. And then these comments are looked at at the pre-meeting, which is open to observers. So that is this meeting on 14 and 15 September, which is quite important because their first preliminary review of the notifications is continued. The revised version that's coming out of this pre-meeting of the reports is then presented to the CRC in a conference room paper. This year, for the very first time, we had very specific arrangements that are not so usual. Um, the work was conducted in two rounds because it was expected that there would be very high workload because already at the last CRC meeting, um, the, the agenda had to be prioritized due to the online setting. And that meant that the CRC already knew at this last meeting that there would be a high workload of notifications to be reviewed. And it was thus decided to conduct the intersessional work in two rounds. A first set of notifications was already reviewed between November last year and April this year. And you can see those are the chemicals that are included on the agenda of CRC 17. But then an additional set of notifications was received. And on these, the intersessional task group work is conducted now. So between May and September of this year. And you might have last week received an invitation to comment on these task group reports. And it's important to note that while this work is going on now, this set of chemicals will only be considered at the next CRC meeting or at the future one, but it's not on the agenda of CRC 17. Those chemicals that are on the agenda of CRC 17, the task group work is already completed, comments were already collected, and the task group reports will be further considered at the pre-meetings on 14 and 15 September. You can find here the link of the task group web page and also of the handbook of working procedure and policy guidance for the committee. This is a very important document for the committee because it contains a collection of procedures of how it works, example of past cases. So it is very much used by the committee in deciding on how to deal with specific situations. Some other agenda items um, that will be considered by CRC 17. One is the rotation of the membership. There is a little bit of a specific situation here because the term of office of 17 of the members was supposed to expire in April next year. And then normally the COP that was to take place this year was supposed to elect new members. But due to COVID, the the COPs could not take place as planned, so there was no face-to-face -face meeting of the COPs. And the bureaus then decided to hold the yeah. COPs in two segments. An online segment that was held this year in July. And then there's going to be a face-to-face -face segment next year. 
and it was decided that the items that the online segment would consider were going to be very restricted, very limited. So they did not elect new members for the CLC yet, but instead they extended the term of office of these 17 members until the closing of the COP. So that means until the end of the face-to-face -face segment. So that means that these 17 members that were normally supposed to, to stop their term of office in April next year, they will continue until new members are elected. And then we have a usual process that CVs and nominations are to be submitted by the Secretariat with the deadline of 1 March 2022. So that story would not concern the CRC that much, but there is one element where it influences the work of the CRC, and that is its bureau members, because all the current five members of the bureau, they have a term of office expiring now at the end of next COP. So it needs to be ensured that there's always a bureau in place um, for the CRC, either by already electing new bureau members now at CRC 17, among those members that are sure to continue, or some elections would need to take place after the face-to-face -face segment of the COP, but they would then need to take place by email or other electronic means, because there's no meeting right after the closure of the COP. Um, so this is something that the CRC will need to consider. And just to note that while the CRC can decide on its bureau member, the election of the CRC chair pertains to the COP. So that, that point will anyways need to wait for the face-to-face -face segment of the COP to hear from them whether a new chair is elected or whether the terms of the current chair are extended. Other matters that will also be considered at CRC are um, activities to facilitate effective participation in the work of the CRC. Notably, there has been a survey carried out among CRC members about their needs to participate effectively in the work of the committee, and the results of that survey will be presented. And then the CRC will also need to discuss how to arrange work in the next intersessional period. Here you can see a, um, the tentative schedule of CRC 17, as it is contained in the information document number two. And I already mentioned that CRC will meet every day from 1 to 5.30. They will take a 30-minute break at some point. Um, and yes, and also important to say is that there is a little bit of a prioritization of the work within those chemicals that are on the agenda of CRC 17. So there are three, sorry, there are four chemicals that are taken up first. That's turbofos, theodicarp, iprodion, and methidation. You can see that these are scheduled on Monday and Tuesday. And then we will see how well the work on these chemicals progresses. And if by Wednesday, we can see that the work on these chemicals is progressing well and that there is time for additional chemicals, the other three, Chlorphenphinphos, Cabaril, and Methylparathion will be introduced in plenary and also considered. And the intention of uh, this prioritization is that there is sufficient time to fully consider all the chemicals, to not have to rush things, to allow all members and observers to express their views, but then also to make sure that the time that's available is used efficiently if there's enough time for these three additional chemicals. Any chemical that is not considered or not concluded at CRC 17 would automatically move to the agenda of CRC 18. Coming now to some practical information for participants. It's always a bit of a challenge with these online sessions to navigate through all these uh, connection links and intranets, etc. And uh, I have to apologize if any of them, I think we have a few members who have joined us today. So you have received slightly different information than what I'm saying right now, but you will soon also receive corrected information because we have made a small change. And that is that you will get an email with your links to all the various sessions. So for the pre-meetings, for the plenary sessions, for the technical trials, you will get that by email. And you will also get the detailed instructions of how you can join the meeting and the user guide and the 
idea is that you will need um, two sets of information. So one would be this email with all the links to join the meeting. And then separately, you would get an email with your username and password to join the meetings. Because when you click on any of these links, you will need to put in your username and password, and then you will be connected to the meetings. We're also holding technical trials um, next week on 6 and 8 September, where you can once again check that uh, all your audio and video setup is working well, and also whether you have received your password, because to access these technical trials, you also go already through the system of the link with the username and password. The internet site still also exists. You can find there all the pre-session documents, any conference room papers, meeting report, any submissions made, the daily schedule, so that you will also get the address and the username and the password. And normally you should receive all of this information by the end of this week. Here you can find then um, an email address and two telephone numbers that you can use if you're having any problems, if you do not receive your username and password, or if you're having uh, technical problems to join the meetings. And there's also an email address for the members to submit conference room papers. And then in, in addition to you know, these briefing webinars and the technical trials, we also always encourage participants to additionally come as early as they can ahead of the sessions, 30 minutes, at the very minimum 15, 20 minutes, so that once again, you can check your audio settings. And at that point, I will hand over to my colleague, Alain Wittig, who will briefly talk about the POPs review committee. Thank you very much, Andrea. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Hope you can hear me correctly. Good. Yes, so I will be uh, providing you uh, some brief information and an update on the status with regard to the 17th meeting of the Persistent Organic Pollutants Review Committee, also known as, uh, in short, uh, POPROC. Um, so POPROC, as you may know, is a a subsidiary body established under the Stockholm Convention, which uh, we can say is um, in some sort the equivalent of the CRC under Rotterdam. It's a scientific subsidiary body, and its mandate is to uh, review chemicals proposed for listing by, by parties, um, for listing in annexes A, B, or C to the conventions. It is to make recommendations to the conference of the parties based on uh, the, the outcomes of this review. And uh, it also undertakes an uh, other technical work as assigned to it by the COP. The reason why uh, we have introduced a short briefing on POPROC 17 in this CRC briefing is that uh, usually uh, the CRC and the POPROC meetings are held back to back uh, in Rome. And as you are aware, uh, due to the uh, ongoing pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic situation, it was not possible to hold these face-to-face -face back and back-to-back -back last year, and it's not the case again um, this year. So the Pop Rock Bureau in June this year, considering um, the, the issues linked to the uh, pandemic, considered uh, a number of, uh, of uh, options for uh, organizing the pop box 17. It considered and made an analysis um, of um, the workload, the nature of the discussions, the timeline required for the various intercessional work. And in June this year, the Bureau, in consultation with the pop rock members, decided to, first of all, postpone uh, pop box 17. And it, uh, so uh, if possible, it would be held as a face-to-face -face meeting in Geneva from 24 to 28 January 2022. If it is indeed held face-to-face -face in Geneva, uh, online, four days of online pre-meetings will be uh, held from 9 to, 12, 9 to 12 November 2021. If, however, due to the COVID-19 situation, it is not possible to hold a meeting um, online. It will be held fully online 
over nine days during the weeks of 17 and 24 January 2022. In the latter situation, if the, indeed the meetings, meeting is held fully online, there will be no pre-meetings held in November 2021. The decision on the final arrangements and, uh, and the setup for POPROC 17 will be taken by the Bureau by early October 2021. My second slide here just shows you uh, the full provisional agenda of POPROC 17. This is to give you a, an idea of the workload of the meeting. As you can see, it's quite a heavy agenda. And I will just um, highlight a few specific points linked to uh, the technical work of the committee um, for POPROC 17. So these are the sub items that are under item four. And the first three sub items A, B, and C relate to the chemicals that are currently uh, under review by the by the committee. So, as a, you may recall, that uh, a part, any party, any Stockholm Convention party, may submit a proposal for listing a new chemical in annexes A, B, or C to the convention. And once uh, received, uh, the committee will um, do a three-step review of these chemicals. And uh, the first chemical, metoxiclor, is at its third stage of review. So the committee will be considering the draft risk management evaluation for this chemical. And if it can agree to adopt this risk management evaluation, it will then also uh, prepare a recommendation for COP11 to consider listing the chemical in the annexes to the convention. Under B, you have two chemicals, Dicaran Plus and UV328. These chemicals are at the second stage of the review process by the committee. So the committee will be considering the draft risk profiles for these chemicals. Just to note that for Dicaran Plus, um, actually uh, the committee will be consider considering a revised version of a draft risk profile that as it had already considered a such a risk profile at POPOC 16 earlier this year, but was unable to to conclude um, and adopt this risk profile. So an intercessional process uh, and working group was uh, established to further review and, uh, and prepare a revised version of this risk profile for the consideration by POPOC 17. Under point under side item C, there are three new chemicals. So these are new proposals uh, for listing chemicals in annexes A, B, or C to the conventions. And therefore, these are the, at the first stage of review by the committee who will be screening those proposals against the criteria set out in the annex D to the convention. The uh, points uh, sub items D and E um, are uh, relate to the periodic review by the committee as mandated by the COP of chemicals that are already listed in the annexes to the convention. So uh, the first, the point D relates to uh, specific exemptions for decapromodiphenyl ether and short chain chlorinated paraffins. And the point E is the periodic review of the evaluation of PFOS, it's also in PFOS F. Point sub item F um, relates to the periodic review by the committee of an indic indicative list of substances covered by the listing of PFOA, its source and PFOA related compounds, which were listed um, by COP9. And at COP9, the COP also mandated the, the committee to, to uh, periodically review this indicative list of substances. And finally, under point uh, sub item, G on long range environmental transport. So this is related to a discussion that took place during POPROC 16. And uh, the committee then established an intercessional working group to prepare draft guidance uh, for the committee uh, on its consideration of long range environmental transport. And this is the aim to um, help members in their future evaluations of proposals for listing of chemicals to the convention. I will stop here. Um, I would like to indicate that uh, in any case, a more detailed and full briefing will be provided in the coming weeks closer to the POPROC 17 meeting once uh, the final arrangements have been have been sorted out. And uh, yeah, so I'll leave it at that and uh, we'll be providing um, 
in, a, in, a, in later this year, a more detailed briefing on Poproc 17. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alain. And that was also the end of our presentation in general. So now over to you, if you have any questions on the two meetings, any comments, then you can either raise your hand and make an intervention, or you can also send any questions through the chat 